Okay, today I'm going to talk about uh, Spinoza. From six, he lived from 1632 to uh, 1677. Let me say something about uh, Spinoza. He's one of the great, uh, great uh, philosophers. Uh, his reputation uh, in the in the 20th century and and lately is high. It's one of the highest of all philosophers. Bertrand Russell said that the most lovable and of all the philosophers was uh, Spinoza. Einstein almost idolized Spinoza. He wrote as an as an adolescent. He wrote poetry in praise of the the Spinoza. He loved Spinoza. He actually uh, visited, uh, went on a pilgrimage to Spinoza's house in the Netherlands. Uh, Spinoza was uh, 1632 to 1677, so he lived a very short life. Let me just say something very br briefly about him. Uh, he he was Jewish. Uh, the only uh, two Jewish thinkers in in the West uh, or uh, that rose to the very heights of intellectual supremacy in philosophy or the sciences were uh, Albert Einstein and and uh, Spinoza. Uh, Spinoza uh, wrote a, his great book is The Ethics, called Ethics, which was published posthumously after it was published in, in uh, 1677 uh, after he died, and for very good reasons because uh, it, when he was living in, in his day, uh, if you wrote certain things that, that went against what the authorities uh, the official doctrine, uh, you, 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 uh, your life was in danger. So many philosophers uh, refused to publish their works while they were living, uh, thinking uh, of, uh, 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 I guess, thinking of the uh, precedents uh, in Gal Galileo's, for example, his house arrest for writing a book to make the aud audacious claim that the earth uh, actually moved around the sun. Uh, stuff like that could get you in big, big trouble and could like, lead to imprisonment. So anyway, Spinoza uh, wrote The Ethics, which is not a, a really about ethics. It's a, it's a complete metaphysical system about the whole of reality. So let me say uh, one of the most interesting things about Spinoza before I get into his philosophy was that he was, when he was 23 years old or 24, he was uh, excommunicated from the Jewish community in Amsterdam. Uh, his parents had, uh, the previous generation had come from Spain and Portugal, you know, the, the Jews had been uh, expelled from those countries and they, they settled in the Netherlands. The Netherlands in the, seven, in the 17th century, the, the, the Netherlands were the most uh, free. Uh, and they were very prosperous, very prosperous, uh, the most prosperous uh, place in Europe. And there was, it was also the freest place. I mean, that's where you'd go if you, want, if you wanted intellectual freedom, you know, to uh, write and to say what you wanted to say. Uh, it was much more freer than uh, what you could find in other parts of Europe. Spinoza was excommunicated when he was 23 years old uh, from the Jewish community. Prim no one really knows exactly you know, why he was excommunicated, but it's pretty clear I mean, what the general uh, charge was. I mean, basically, he uh, repudiated fundamental uh, uh, beliefs of the Jewish community. Uh, he rejected the Jewish view of God as personal. For, uh, for Spinoza, God and nature are essentially one. So Spinoza did not believe that there, that nature was created by God. For Essentially, he was, a, like you could call him a pantheist in some way. Some people call him an atheist, but uh, he identified God and nature, which was very anti-Jewish. He didn't believe the Bible was inspired by God. He believed it was just like any other book and open to critical uh, analysis. He didn't believe that Moses wrote the Pentateuch. He didn't believe in uh, a he didn't believe in the soul in the traditional sense of the word. He didn't believe in immort immortality. He, he believed that when you died, you died. So you could see why uh, he, his ideas were uh, 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 very dangerous to the Jewish community. He was actually offered, they offered him money, a uh, pretty substantial amount of money per year, just, you know, to they'd give him a, a certain amount of money if he would just, you know, keep quiet, keep his ideas to himself. Uh, but he refused to do that. Uh, by nature, he was pretty much of a loner anyway, so it wasn't really that big of a deal to get excommunicated. Uh, it was a big deal, though, in a certain sense, because excommunication in that time from the Jewish community meant basically that you were totally cut off from the Jewish community. You couldn't, you couldn't uh, talk to anyone. You, they, no one could have anything to do with you. So basically, what he had, he had, to, it was, it was a, a, a 
in fact, he was the only, I think, uh, many other Jews had been excommunicated. It was, it was kind of temporary. Uh, you know, uh, you could come back. But Spinoza, well, his excommunication was final. Uh, uh, he was cursed with all the curses of Deuteronomy. And so it was a long uh, a ceremony in the in the synagogue. You know, it went on and on and on and on about all how, how, how diabolic he was. And uh, how, you know, he would be all cursed with all the curses of Deuteronomy and on and on and on. So anyway, he made, he spent his life pretty much in, alone in solitude. Uh, he made his living uh, by grinding lenses. So lenses for uh, the telescopes. So that was a new thing. The new science was coming into being. So there was technology was getting going. So uh, he, he, he uh, ground lenses for telescopes and microscopes and, uh, and glasses, uh, spectacles. Uh, he died early, a lot of people, of, of lung ailment, and probably a lot of people think it's because of the, all the dust he inhaled, you know, from grinding the lenses. Um, anyway, so he's, uh, he, he uh, nobody wanted to be associated with Spinoza for a long time, for about a hundred years. Nobody wanted to have anything to do with him. He was always referred to as that atheist. David Hume, who himself was an atheist, uh, often criticized Spinoza as being an atheist. So, I mean, Spinoza's reputation is very, very low. Nobody wants to have anything to do with him. Uh, Leibniz, uh, you know, one of the great philosophers of all time, had met, actually, a year before Spinoza died, Leibniz met Spinoza. And they had a discussion. Uh, Spinoza shared some of the stuff he was working on, the ethics, and uh, Leibniz was very impressed. Uh, when Leibniz would write Spinoza letters, he was very, you know, oh, the great, you know, he would, he would praise him, but he would not praise him in public. In fact, he would, he would, he said, oh yeah, I visited when I was in Amsterdam, Netherlands, you know, I visited uh, Spinoza, but it was no big deal. Uh, so uh, nobody likes uh, Spinoza. Um, he was, uh, nobody wanted to be associated with him at all. Uh, because he was considered this atheist. And in that day, to be an atheist meant that you were immoral and that you could, your uh, testimony cannot be uh, trusted in courts. Of course, well, that's why you, you, you swore to God. Well, an atheist didn't believe in God, so their testimony couldn't be trusted. Anyway, so Spinoza, his, eventually his reputation became, uh, the Romantics loved Spinoza. So that's when his, and Goethe, uh, Goethe loved him. Uh, Coleridge, Wordsworth, they loved Spinoza. And so the Romantics, he, his reputation uh, came back with the Romantics and has, uh, in, in the 20th century and 21st century, his reputation is very, very high. Uh, you hear, you, you, and even people that are studying the brain, neuroscience and things like that, uh, they, they, read, they go back and read Spinoza and they, they're amazed at the insights that are to be found in Spinoza's work. So anyway, basically, I just want to go over some of the, I want to relate Spinoza to uh, Descartes. Spinoza, uh, he wrote one book on Descartes' uh, philosophy. I think that was one of the, maybe the only book, book he published in his, in his life. It was a book on explaining the Cartesian principles. And basically, uh, Spinoza agreed with Descartes. We haven't got into Descartes' proof of God, but Descartes claimed to have proved that God existed that this infinite being uh, uh, no, caused by nothing else, you know, self-caused, uh, eternal, infinite being existed. And this God uh, created everything else. God created uh, every, the whole, the universe. And uh, that was De Descartes' view. Spinoza accepted the proof. The, it's, and we'll get into that later. Um, he accepted the, uh, it's a, a kind of a version of Anselm's proof of God, which we will talk about later when we get into the proofs. Well, they, basically, it's called the ontological argument that you could prove God simply by understanding the meaning of the word God. So Spinoza accepted the ontological proof, except he took it in a direction that Descartes would not. Spinoza believed that you could prove that God existed, and by God he meant an infinite being, perfect being, infinite, and uh, a substance, uh, infinite substance, perfect. Now, he, he took that very seriously. Uh, he, he took the idea of God being, a, a th I'll, think, I'll talk about what he meant, uh, what he said about God's being infinite. If God is infinite, Spinoza said, there can be nothing outside of him. Because if there was, if there was something outside of God, then that, that would, God would be finite. There would be something to limit God. So he used that to argue that God has to be coextensive with the universe. Because if, God, if there was something outside of God, say the universe, then God would not be infinite. Another argument that he had was that God is a, he, God is a substance. He, he accepts that from Descartes. 
uh, God is an infinite substance. And by definition, a substance is that which does not depend upon anything else. And he argued from that that everything in the universe, anything that you point out in the universe, is causally related to something else. So you can explain anything within the universe by reference to something else. The only thing that you cannot explain, uh, that you cannot give a cause to when you're dealing with the universe is the totality of the universe. The universe itself is all that is. It's everything. So there cannot be a cause of everything because there's nothing other than everything. There's nothing outside of everything. So it's those, those two ideas that Spinoza used to argue that God and nature are one and the same. There's only one substance for Spinoza. For, for Descartes, as we saw, there's an infinite substance, and this infinite substance, God, creates finite substances, souls and bodies, minds and bodies. And as we saw, that led to a, a big problem for Descartes when it came to bringing together to explain how the mind and the body interact, uh, because we know they do. You know, I, my, I, tell, I, I, I think to myself, I'm going to pick this pencil up, and I pick it up. My thinking to pick it up was a mental event. And Descartes believed that uh, that mental event is was uh, comes from my mind, which is a substance, immaterial substance. And my hand is material, and so my hand rises. Uh, I raise my hand, so my hand goes up. And what caused it to go up? It was a thought in my mind. No one could explain how those how those two substances could interact, how a mental substance could interact with the material substance. Spinoza didn't have that problem because Spinoza believed there was only one substance. There can only be one substance because by definition, a substance doesn't depend upon anything else. And if you take that seriously, that means there's only one substance. There cannot be minds and material objects cannot be substances because they do depend upon something else. They depend upon God. And Descartes didn't. He, Descartes accepted that, but he then he said he, he basically didn't really pay too much attention to. It. He said, okay, yeah, that's true. Technically speaking, there's one substance, God, but then God created these uh, finite substances. Spinoza said, no. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, take that definition seriously, that God is is, is there's that a, a substance is that which does not depend upon anything else, it exists independently, then you have to be consistent and argue that there's only one substance, and that's God. Uh, and that means there, there's not two. So he doesn't have a problem with the mind-body problem because the, the mind-body problem for Descartes arises from the fact that there are two substances, mental and physical. Uh, Spinoza didn't have the problem of, of how two substances interact because there's not two substances. There's only one substance, God. Mind and body are two properties of or modifications of the one substance. In fact, Spinoza believed that God had infinite, uh, infinite, uh, at, uh, infinite uh, properties. God has uh, all we know are two of them. We know mind and we know extension. Uh, but there are infinite, since God is a perfect being, he has infinite perfections, of only two of which we are aware of. So Spinoza believed that there, God has infinite properties. Uh, mind and body are only two of them, but they are modifications of the one substance. So there, for Spinoza, there's not a mind-body problem because there are not two substances that have to interact. Basically, mind and body are two aspects of the same thing. So there's no mind-body problem. So that's, you know, Spinoza, that's, he, he doesn't have that mind, he doesn't have that problem. That's one way to get out of the uh, uh, to uh, avoid Des to uh, solve Descartes' problem, and the way to one, the the way Spinoza uh, took was to deny that there are, are finite substances, and once you deny that there are finite substances, then you don't have the problem anymore. Okay, but at the at the cost, many people would say, well, the, of, of 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 concluding that there's only one substance. That seems kind of strange to a lot of people, but that's what Spinoza believed: only one substance. And he believed that everything follows necessarily from that one substance. So he denied there's no such thing as freedom of the will. For Descartes, freedom of the will did exist because uh, God created souls, and souls are by definition free. They have free freedom of, to choose. Anyway, in today's uh, video, I have to end because of my 15 minutes is up. But basically, the, I wanted to point out that there's a big leap from Descartes, who has two finite substances and an infinite substance, what, they, what Spinoza does is he wipes out the two finite substances and just puts one substance there. When we look at Leibniz, you're going to find another, another rationalist, and he's going to have infinite substances. 
Spinoza has one, and Leibniz will have infinite ones. I'll talk when I talk about Leibniz. I'll I'll, I'll talk about that.